we are still in track, track two, defensive management. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Salvador Mendoza to you. Uh, he's one of the guys who came in through the, uh, through the CFP. Yeah. Those who have been at Troopers probably know that uh, some slots uh, that, that we say assigned the slots in different ways. Some, uh, there is some people we reach out to, there is some uh, people who know we, uh, who, who have been here before and we, we, knew, we know they delivered. And then there's the CFP and the CFP usually is, uh, that's a very, very tough competition. Uh, so it's, it's not many slots left. And uh, this year we had like uh, overall, if I recall the number correctly, like 150 submissions or so for maybe 10 slots. And he's one of the uh, yeah. who, who made it into for for the simple reason uh, when we when we saw the submission. And I, I mean, he, he provided good material, good abstract and stuff. But we were like, okay, this is from what we see in our customer space. This is a very very relevant topic. Which is why we put it in this track, as we know that suddenly some of you guys here in the room think about this type of technology uh, to use it in some type of product. So, very happy to have you here. So Thank you. Go. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here in Troopers, be part of the anniversary. Uh, so, my name is Salvador Mendoza, and I'm going to talk about Samsung Pay, talking its numbers, plus, and issues. Maybe you are asking yourselves, who is Salvador Mendoza? So I'm a security researcher, I live in California, and I'm Mexican. So when California sends people to Heidelberg, they don't send the best, they send the bad hombres. So some terminology for this tag is about uh, NFC for Neoflake Communication, uh, MST for Magnetic Security Transmission. So basically how Samsung Pay works, it implements two protocols simultaneously to make a purchase. For example, when you're going to make a payment, you are going to use these two protocols. So the idea of these two protocols is that Samsung Pay can be accepted in many terminals as possible. BTS is the Visa Token Service, which are the rules to make the tokenization process. Tokenized numbers are surrogate values, which means token. You need to see the surrogate values like uh, an IT and a database, which relates the primary account number. The token is a voucher that you can use sir, for, it, for one transaction just one transaction. TSP is token service provider. The token service provider, it, it played like a main role in this tokenization process because it's like a third party and the system and the payment network. So for example, when you're going to make a payment, uh, this token goes to the payment network and the token service provider check if the token is valid and after that, it validates the primary account number and pay for primary account number. Uh, why did Samsung pay? Basically, it's a new application to make digital payments. It's very similar to Apple Pay or to Android Pay, but the main difference is the protocol magnetic security transmission. But exactly what is MST? MST is a magnetic field. For example, when you get close to the terminal, I want to make a payment. The Samsung Pay, it has a coil, something similar to the picture, which is a MaxPro device. And this coil is going to send bits to the, to the terminal. A terminal is going to detect these bits like you're swiping a car. This terminal interpre interprets the electromagnetic waves like swiping a physical car. Of course, this doesn't have any security and the magnetic security transmission protocol, it gets one way. So let's analyze a tokenized number. For example, when you swipe a car, your car has three tracks uh, and Samsung Pay tokens, it's very similar. They have the same token and all the tracks. Why? Why they have the same token and all the tracks? The main idea is, for example, it doesn't matter which track the terminal detects. If it detects anyone, the transaction can go through. So it has Sentinel separators, and also they follow the American Banking Association format. So it's like a normal credit card. So I have my Samsung Pay. I want to make an example. What exactly is a token. So I have my credit card reader here, and I have my Samsung Pay. So you, to see exactly what Samsung tokens look like. So that's a token of Samsung Pay. For example, if I leave it 
if I leave the application, send the token for one minute, it's going to send the same token again and again because it doesn't, it doesn't recognize when the terminal detects the token. So let's go back to So how the token is, they, they play the role in the payment network. For example, when you go, you go to, for example, a coffee shop, and you're going to make a payment, the, when, when they send the data to the payment network, it sends the token, but also it sends data from the coffee shop. In the payment network, they, uh, the TSP, the token service provider, detects the token, and it relates the primary account number. So it sends data to the bank, and it responds if the transaction can go through or it's going to be declined. So let's analyze each track. It doesn't matter if you track one, two, or three, the same data. The last first 16 digits are the new virtual credit card. For example, when you have a card and you are to Samsung Pay, what the token service provider does is it creates a new virtual credit card. It's not going to be the same that your physical credit card number is going to give you a new virtual credit card. But the main point here is like the last 20 digits of this virtual credit card, which are like counters. You need to see that this one like counters. Uh, and the last part of the, of the token, they are the 20 digits. The first four digits are the new expiration date. The, le the next three digits are the service code. One of the m most important things here is like, when you have a chip and pin protection card and you add it to Samsung Pay, Samsung Pay is going to change the service code for 201 to 01. That means that you, the user doesn't have the necessity to insert the, the card in the terminal. The next uh, counter is the range, the transaction range, which is going to change um, after four or five transactions. The next one is the transaction ID. This one, it doesn't matter if the, transa the transaction goes through or not. It's going to increment plus one in each transaction. And the last three digits are the random numbers. One of the features or one of the issues is the way that, depends how you see it, it's like the users can make payments in offline mode. Uh, I, for me, it's an issue. For example, it doesn't matter if you have like a, an airplane mode or you have a problem with the network, you can make payments using offline mode. The main problem is like the counter in the middle and the first paragraph is going to be constant if you are in offline mode. So the only thing that is going to change are the ID transactions, for example, 216, 217, 218, and the last three digits of the token. When the cell phone connects to internet, the counter in the middle is going to change, and it's going to do all the process again. Oh, I'm talking a little bit about the offline mode. Like in other transactions, the, the tokens have some faces or status that is going to change depending how you're using the tokens. For example, if the cell phone is not, is not in online mode, it's in provision, provision status, which means it needs to request more data from the server. And after it connects to the server, it updates the pile of the tokens. All these uh, status um, are very important. One of the, mo the most important is the provision token, where uh, I'm going to exploit one of the, I'm going to exploit it in, in, in a few examples later. So how Samsung Pay updates the tokens? This example is for Vista Developer Center. Um, what they need is a Johnson format request, and they need to use provision token ID and API key. Basically, this is the format that Vista provides to update these kind of tokens. Please keep in mind this slide that we're going to use later. One of the things Samsung Pay said is they never store any kind of physical credit card in the cell phone. But that doesn't mean that they store data from the customers. I found in the code when I was reversing it that they have many structure of the databases and some important information on it, like certificates, um, connection to servers, but also the status of the tokens. In the directors and files, I found that they save a lot of information in the EFS folder, which is one of the more critical folders and the Android devices. But the question is how they protect this information, for example, if a user can root the phone. Well, they use a NOTS umbrella. 
The notes, it's a layer of protection when they can protect, for example, the Samsung applications. Let's say, for example, this is a notes layer, and all applications like Facebook, Twitter, they are above the layer, but the Samsung applications are under this umbrella. So, for example, let's say a user wants to root the phone. Uh, the system is going to detect that, and you're not going to be able to use Samsung Pay again. It's like one of the protections they are using. Why? The idea is like, because they have a lot of information in these kind of folders, they try to protect as much as possible using this kind of notes layer. Also, inside of the Samsung Pay, they have a class from notes that is a cycle, checking the integrity of the cell phone by itself. So let's take a look of the LATS database, the CBP JAN encrypted. Let's see one of the tables and the structure of this table. One of the fields, very important, is the provision token ID on the VPN role I'm ID and the app program ID. I can relate this data, how they are going to update the status of the token. Maybe you're thinking this kind of very good encryption, or they have very good encryption on these databases. I found that they was using a, a static password in one of the functions to protect databases. So it's really an encryption or it's a substitution character. Uh, that was surprised me that it, it just not yet for one method, I mean for databases. They use it for another kind of um, methods, for example, to connect to internet, all that kind of stuff. So it's very critical if someone can reverse this kind of um, methods and they can get very important data from Samsung Pay. Some flaws and issues. When I was able to back up the database from Samsung Pay, I was able to back up the SPay database. The SPay database has a card table. One of the most important fields in this card table was the token expiration date. I, I figured out it was blank and the editor tried spare time implement timestamp, which is like it's like uh, a brand timestamp for one day. So I figured it out that if the token is not used to make a purchase, that token is still alive. For example, let's say I ask him, um, can you show me how Samsung Pay works? And he showed me how Samsung Pay works. He's not making a purchase, but he's showing me how Samsung Pay is working. But it's generating one token. And that token is going to be alive even after he logged the phone. Because when he opens the phone again, or he opens, opens Samsung Pay and tries to make another purchase, it's going to generate a new token. But the last token is still alive. So if, uh, I was thinking about, what about if I, um, I'm thinking that someone intercepts one of my tokens. What about if I delete and add the same card again? Maybe I will get a very random credit card number. But what, what I found was that the next virtual, virtual credit cards they are very similar. There are not too much change using the same Visa token service uh, framework. So, some attacks. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the social engineering. It's the same thing that I was talking about, like asking for people like how Samsung Pay works and how we can exploit it. I was thinking about a device that I can use under my clothes and asking someone like, the same thing, how Samsung Pay works. I get a credit card reader, a small credit card reader, so I create the token get tool. The token get tool is a tool that you can wear it under your clothes, and you can use it to ask people how Samsung Pay works, and you detect it, and you get the token. And you can use it with another hardware. Let me show you a video, so you guys want to see. So I'm wearing the, the token get in my left hand, and I start capturing the tokens. What the tool does is it takes the token and it sends it by email to the attacker. So the attacker can get these tokens and can use another hardware to use it, like MaxPoof, for example, from Sami Camcor. You can see in the background, they are updating the tokens on my email. So let's say you got the tokens. So now what? Now I can update these tokens using MaxPoof. This tool is very simple and it's very cheap. You can use it, you can add it using Arduino. And I add the token, I go to the machine, 
and I try to make a purchase. I'm talking about the tokens for about, I, I collect the token and I wait for around three hours. So it's approximately like 24 hours, the process that you can have to make these kind of purchases. So after that, I was thinking, what about something more automatically? What about if an attacker can have like a bot close to a terminal and can jam the terminal and skim the tokens? What I mean with that, for example, when you're going to make a payment, the terminal is in input mode. But when you swipe the card, the terminal is no more in input mode. So what I was, what I wanted to do is was, I make this device that sends signals with max spoof and create like a jammer. So when people get close to the, to the terminal, the schema is going to detect the token, it's going to send it by email. It's the same process. The main problem here was how I can connect the Raspberry to the Mac spoof to work together using a pins from the Raspberry. So I designed these bots. It's kind of, I tried to do it in this kind of size because you can see how it works. We have a coil which starts sending signals. So the jam, the, the terminal detects the tokens. It's a valid in format, but it's not valid monetarily. But the schemer can detect Samsung paid tokens when people get close to a terminal. Let me show you a video, how it works. So this video was recorded in Vegas. So I found this kind of cool terminals. I put my schemer and jammer close to a terminal and it starts sending tokens. And the terminal is too busy trying to validate these tokens. When a person gets close to a terminal, the terminal is, is no more in input mode, but the token that it's sending is going to be detected by my schemer and it's going to send by email so I can use it with max spoof, very similar to another attack, the last part. This kind of max spoof is a little bit different, but it's the same idea. So the main problem here is like, the token is not disposal after the, the cell phone is locked, for example. So what about international Samsung pay tokens? I thought that, for example, when you go to another country, for example, when I have to come here to Germany, I have to call my bank to let them know that I was going to be here so I can use my credit card numbers or my credit cards. So I thought that maybe the tokens, they're going to do the same. You, you need to call the bank to use these kind of tokens in another country. What I found very interesting was I sent one of my tokens to one of my friends in Mexico and I told him, hey, what about you try to make a purchase in Mexico? using Samsung Pay. In this case, I send the token and they use Max Spoof, another Max Spoof to make a purchase. And he's trying me to charge 20 Mexican pesos. But Samsung Pay is not in Mexico yet. So I was assumed that this transaction wasn't go through, but it won't even he falsificated my sign. Sure. So the transaction went through and I got a notification on Samsung Pay that someone charged me 20 Mexican pesos in Mexico. So another, another issue, it was what about if I can make a tool that we can um, attack a person real time. The person is in one terminal and I'm in the another terminal close to him or to here. And when she's making the, the purchase, I can get the token and rapidly I can use it in our terminal. So I designed this tool with a
and you got it. Cool. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, so I she got the notification that I make a purchase while she was trying to make a purchase using the same token that he was using that she she was trying to use. So now we talk about the MST, the Magnetic Security Transmission Protocol. So let's talk about Near Field Communication Protocol. The Near Field Communication Protocol by default is more secure. That's the idea. Even if you twist it a little bit, it's going to be more secure. But uh, I think Samsung Pay twisted a little bit more than that. So how Samsung Pay implements two different tokens per transaction? I was wondering that Samsung Pay, it was going to use the same token for MST and the same token for NFC. But what I found was that they used two different tokens for just one transaction. So for example, for Magnetic Security Transmission Protocol, they use the 216 using the service code 101. And for NFC, they use 201 and the ID transaction is 217 which was very interesting. I said, what about you yeah, use that token, the NFC token, and try to make a purchase in another application? Uh, by default, this couldn't be possible. Because why? By default, they have a secure element in the NFC, which means when you are going to make a purchase with NFC, you get close to a terminal, and it makes a connection. And the connection connects to the secure element and they interchange the cryptograms and the counters, so they update it. But what I found was that in, the, in your right side, it's how Samsung Pay works. I think they didn't have any secure element to make um, the transactions. But in the, in the log of the NFC tags, I found that they use a cryptogram, but it's not co working correctly. The blue is the, the, second, the second part of the track, and the next part of the cryptogram. And after that, I see the 9000, which means it's a um, successful transaction, a successful uh, communication. So what I found was that it's possible to intercept NFC tags. In this example, in this example, I use MST first to get the token for MST. And after that, I get the token for NFC using another Samsung device, using a program we call Credit Card Reader Pro, so I can get the tags for NFT. So after that, I, I took, I took the, the data from the track two from the NFT, and I copied to, to make the tracks for MaxProof. But instead of using MaxProof this time, I'm using an application for Android. So you will see the track two in a second. In the last part of the, of the log, you can see the track, which you can use it to make purchases. After a while, let me go back a little bit. So I, I make these tokens. Using the same, the same log, I create these NFC tracks. So what I do was, I use another application, which is called MyCard application. And I, I add it to it. So I save it using the same track and I went to a machine to make a purchase using NFC in this case. When I close to the machine, it detects the token, just make it selection, and the transaction, the transaction went through, which was very surprised for me because it was NFC. After that, I got the notification on Samsung Pay that I was making a purchase. So what about getting a token? Uh, when I was talking to the Samsung guys, they were very skeptical about this kind of this topic. When I told them that it's possible to get a token, they say it's impossible. Because let's say this is the video of they use in their website. This kind of tokens they implement. Very random tokens. That's what I expect. Really, that's what I expect. But let's say, let's say that I want to make a lock. 
I'm going to delete these tokens and I'm going to grab my Samsung Pay and let's try to capture some tokens to see how, how they are related one to another. So I'm going to capture around five tokens. You can see there is no very random numbers. I mean, they are consecutive numbers. What you can see here is like we have, let me put this one in another format so you guys. So we have the new virtual credit card numbers and we have the token hard. And after that we have the expiration date, we have the service code, but also we have the BCC. What we can see is that transaction ID is what is changing. 46, 47, 48, 49. And after that, the random numbers. Let's try to guess the next token as troopers. Give me number from zero, from zero to 99, I mean to 999 to try to guess the next token. Give me a number. Any number, give me a number. Nine. Nine? So let's say it's gonna be the next number. We know there's going to be 51 for the transaction ID, but the main idea here is like to guess the last three digits. It's impossible? I don't think so. One ninety eight. So I told them that what I found was that it's possible to guess a token from zero to nine ninety nine. <coughs> so how the Samsung Pay fits everything? Well, they updated terms of service. <laughs> they say you, you cannot interfere or attempt to interfere with the operation of Samsung Pay. Also, you might not reverse engineer, copy, the compile, this and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. They, the idea was here is like the implementation and the design by itself is not correct. It's impossible, I, I, I don't want to say impossible, but it's very difficult to uh, fit this flaw because from the design, it's incorrect. So I was like that, and after that I was like that. <laughs> so other researchers, I found very interesting topics about Samsung Pay from Asia. These guys were able to detect tokens from 1.8 meters of distance. They were able to skim tokens from 1.8 meters, which is very, very, is, is a range, a range of very, very long range for skimming tokens. But um, they have a, this channel that you can see all the videos, that, how they work with that. They have like a big coil connected to a jack audio. So they use audio to detect these kind of signals. Very interesting. So after all of this research, uh, after Max Pupai, I designed this tool, which is called Samicam from Samicam Car Guy. This tool is for pen testing max try information. You can use it in raspberries. Um, the idea is like you have prepared attacks on the display, so you can you don't have the necessity to connect to any kind of machine or whatever. Just plug into the battery, and you can use a coil to send max try information. You can connect using Bluetooth or web server, and it's very very cheap. Where I'm using a five dollars Raspberry Pi, so. That's the main idea, so you can, I use this one all the time, it's from Samsung Pay, of course. You just plug in, and you are ready to use it to make purchase or to test what kind of token that you want to use. Uh, everything is online, it's an open source that uh, people want, if they want, they can send to print all these kind of boards or whatever, and they, of course, they can update it, the code for it. Some, some takeaways from this tag is that Samsung Pay has some levels of security. 
but it's fact that could be the target for malicious attacks. Samsung Pay has some limitations in the tokenization process, which could affect customer security. And finally, token generated by Samsung Pay could be used in another hardware. Please, if you have any questions, you can ask me or you can um, contact me to my phone from Troopers, or you can um, send me an email or whatever. Yes, thank you for a very interesting talk. Uh, thank you. It was very cool at Hex. <laughs> Thank you. Please, do you have any question? Feel free. Um, so basically, uh, it seems as if the, the implementation, how Samsung Pay implemented, like a tokenization process and everything behind it, seems horribly broken. Um, on first thought, like looking at MST, it also sounds like a horrible idea to just broadcast your, your credit card data to the world. Um, do you see like room for a safe implementation? I guess for NFC, that's of course possible somehow. Um, but to implement uh, MST uh, in a safe way, so kind of well reducing uh, the possibility of being skimmed. Yes, um, I think the best the best idea to do this to use the MST technology. It's, for example, when you're using your cell phone, when you finish transmitting or you lock your phone, all the tokens have to be expired. Basically, that's one of the, the best or the easy things that you can use. Um, of course, they are going to be a, a range of the seconds where you're transmitting, but you, you're like getting rid of many other kind of attacks. But yeah, basically you can do different things. One of them is to expire all the tokens when you're, when you're finishing or when you close your phone or you lock it or whatever. Any questions? Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, can you uh, talk a little more about how you jammed the, uh, the current transactions? Sure. Um, let me go back a little bit so you can see the, the jammer. Um, let's say in this picture right here, and your left side is a max spoof. Max spoof, it has a coil. Origi originally, they have a button on it that you, when you click it, you can send signal to a terminal. Uh, this, this signal is it's basically a credit card number. What I, what I did was I connect, instead of that button, I connect directly to the Raspberry. I use a pin, uh, one of the pins for Raspberry. I use a resistor, 10K. Um, what I did was I start sending tokens every three seconds to a terminal. So the terminal is always busy trying to capture these tokens and trying to validate them using the, the max spoof device. In the same time, I'm using a credit card reader connected to the same Raspberry, detecting any and other kind of credit card numbers different than the skimmer. I mean, different than the jammer. When I get another token different than the jammer, I send it by email. But basically, say a max spoof device that I used to make purchase, connected to a Raspberry, and in a cycle, sending tokens like every three or four seconds, continuously, until the, the terminal is working and working and working, and it's no more in input mode. That's basically how it works. So, so basically, if, if I'm the, the victim, and I approach, um, um, and I approach with, with my device, and I try to pay, uh, I will see that the terminal is busy all the time, right? Mm, probably, yes. Yeah, okay, the idea is, the, yeah, that's the idea. The terminal is going to be busy. Okay, so it's not, uh, it's not entirely um, um, spoofed or uh, um, like, I would know if something is wrong. Yes, Am of I? course, yes, yes. Basically, when a person is paying with your phone or their phone, they are always ready with the phone to make a payment even before they get to a terminal. So when they get close to a terminal, they always, they are running the application very quickly. So when you approach to a terminal, you will see the display, but you are already sending the, the token. Sometimes you will see, and sometimes maybe you are already sending the token. But yeah, you will see in the display of the terminal. Yeah. I, 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 saw no, I saw another attack that even you can update or change the POS so the person thinks that 
the the PO is, is running normally, but it's it's not. And one one more question: uh, Did you try the approach of what Sammy did with the um, with the car with the car alarms? Uh, the pattern went like the algorithm where he um, recorded tokens without sending them, and then like he had valid tokens to use whenever he liked to. Well, um, I saw this tag in DevCon in 2015, 14, I think. It's a car hacking tag. Uh, I was there and I was inspired. That's why I get for the Samsung Pay thing. Um, after the attack, um, they make a, this, this tool called Roll Jam. And this Roll Jam, what it does is like, it has two trans receivers. One is connected to the use agency, basically. Uh, what it does is like one, one uh, radio is sending noise to one frequency very close where you open your car, which is close to four, 433 megahertz. And the another, the another uh, radio frequency is detecting the new tokens. But the main, uh, the main problem with uh, the summit research was that every, every new token, let's say, mathematically is going to be greater but you can use the last one. And with Samsung Pay, you can use the last one. So that's the main, the main difference. But yeah, I research about that too. It's pretty cool stuff. It's no release because, you know, it's kind of dangerous. But yeah, we talk about, I have a class with him about this kind of radio frequencies in Los Angeles. Yeah, very interesting. Hi. Hello. Have you tried to use a token a couple of days later? No. Well, I tried, but it didn't work. It didn't the, work. So it, there might be an expiration time in the back end. 24 hours. It's 24 hours. So. But 24 hours is too much for the token expiration. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was concerned that maybe a few seconds is too much for the token expiration. Any other questions? Thank you guys, really appreciate it.